Welcome to Pooh's Pageant of British History. Designed to illustrate the finer points of the political development of these isles, to, as Pooh says, Mother Cat, and other such foreign personages. I am Professor Becca de la Gibson, and I am a lecturer in medieval English politics at the University of Bognor and Arundel. Behind me stands the remains of one of King John's more ambitious building projects, Corfe Castle. I am sort of honored, in a weird kind of a way, to be introducing this, Pooh's celebratory retelling of the story of Magna Carta, or, as Pooh irritatingly keeps calling it, because he misheard the Latin, Magnet Cart Horse. Dear Lord preserve my sanity. And he won't be told will he. Magna Carta translates as, Great Charter. At the beginning of the 13th century, the Great Charter was the Catholic Church's and English barons' attempt to prevent the evil of tyranny arising in the fledgling English body politic. Opposing this attempt, but temporarily at bay, was probably one of the most contradictory and challenging of the Ongevin Plantagenet line, King John. He was the youngest son of Henry II and the long-lived Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. Pooh, of course, takes this lead role and makes it uniquely his own. Oh dear. Dear me. Why oh why? Our assign wonder does his very best to bring this action-packed episode of English history to life. Marvel, as he plays multiple roles. From bad King John himself, to the church hierarchy in the form of Archbishop of Canterbury, Stephen Langton. And gender does not stand in Pooh's way either, unfortunately. Let wonderment and astonishment be your friends, as Pooh dons wimple and flowing gown to portray King John's child bride, Queen Isabella. As a professor of history, the finished production made me very emotional. Fortunately the film crew were on hand to wrest the knife from my trembling hand. Ladies and gentlemen I give you, Bad King John and the Magnet Cart Horse, by Pooh. I resign. Forget the money. I is King John of England and Count of Aquitaine. It is the year 1215 and I has a bit of a problem. You will, yes. And my, my barons hate me, the church hates me, the peasants hate me, and my own mother hated me before she died. Did you mean for me? Mean for me? Uh, they all got it in for me. But why, you ask? What could this handsome, fine, upstanding bag, oh, I, I mean, king, of striking demeanour, have done to deserve such criticism? <laughs> uh, after all, I is one of the richest kings in Christendom. <laughs> My castles is piled high with silver shillings, and no English king has ever been so wealthy. That uh, I is actually running out of places to stash my cash. And my feasting halls are the talk of the land. They dig in them. No cost is spared to provide the choicest pickings and lashings of wine in abundant quantities to all my guests, night after night. The plus is very good looking. Well, yes, I is, you know. You know, you know, now, now, now I'm going to be another character. Yeah, yeah. Th th I thought I'd better tell you, because you might not have recognised me, yeah, as I use a theatrical master of disguise, yeah, yeah, yeah. and of many and exotic voices and accents. Yeah, yeah, well, yes, <laughs> yes. Now, I is Stephen Langton, Archbishop of Canton, be very, yes. I is doing him now. <laughs> Hearken to the story of a tyrant, my lovies. King John is a very bad king indeed. Firstly, he didn't want me to be Archbishop. He had some other fellow lined up. And when my boss, Pope Innocent, said he must have me, King John went bonkers. They then actually disobeyed the Pope and said, no, 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 no. 
Well, well, this is the Middle Ages, my dearios, and you simply can't do such a thing, even if you is a stinky great old king. Anyway, it was simply a ploy by the nasty evil John to get my boss to excommunicate him. <laughs> Pope Innocent didn't stop there. He excommunicated the entire realm. Did well. King John didn't seem to care at all and set about taking all the church lands and money he could get his greedy hands on. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had to flee the country, leaving the excommunicated population without spiritual succour and with no chance of getting into heaven. King John then commenced to bleed the land white to increase his wealth, imprisoning and murdering all who he thought plotted against him. He were a bad, bad man, <laughs> but his evil ways were greatly upsetting his barons, whose power, influence and wealth John was continually eroding and ignoring. <laughs> Without their support, he might well be toppled, even he was beginning to see that. <laughs> now, 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 he's going to play a lady now. Oh, yes, the Queen of England, young Isabella, John's wife. Don't be alarmed, but you may not recognise me at all in this part. Oh, well, yes, 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 yes. Isabella, the beautiful young wife of King John. We was married when I was seven. Well, I didn't want to be an old maid. But John, realising I were but a child, were a wonderful gentleman and patiently waited until I were nearly eight before he consummated our union. Well, he is a wonderful man. He smells so sweet and takes a bath every single month. He is reputed to be the cleanest man in Europe. Well, yes. All he wants is to be able to reclaim his father's ancestral domains, which were slyly tricked out of his hands by that military genius with a huge army, King Philip Augustus of France. <laughs> my, my, my dear husband needs a lot of money to do that, and so, of course, the, the bountiful wealth of England must be tapped and drained and hoarded and lands confiscated and barons' rights trampled upon. It's not a cheap day out invading France, you know. And now those awful rough hairy barons are up in arms and have officially declared that they hate my beloved husband. Well, hate is a very strong word. I really think that they are just a teeny bit annoyed with him. It would all blow over. And he has a plan, of course. <laughs> now he's going back to being the King John again. Yes, it's me, Poon. I bet you failed to realise it were me as the lovely Queen Isabella. <laughs> Is you enjoying it so far? Mm -hmm. has got Pope Innocent off my back and turned him into my bestest friend by promising to take the cross and go on crusade to Atarima. <laughs> I mean, he must be desperate for volunteers if he has believed me that I will do that. <laughs> anyway, what a strange old stick Pope Innocent really is. He's ordered all the church's priests to put away their wives. In future, all priests must be unmarried and celibate. Dear me, he doesn't take a genius to see what trouble in the future there will be, what with a church full of priests who aren't keen on women and don't want to get married. <laughs> Mark my words, the priesthood will become a magnet for all manner of weirdos. Oh, yes, yes. Anyway, what with me now, a heroic crusader, 
the king of France and my rebellious barons cannot openly criticize me, or else the Pope will beat them up. No, I has also agreed to a crappy charter thing that my filthy, stinky knights and earls is calling the Magnet Cartos, which that old Queen Langton has mainly written to make sure the church gets back into the driving seat. Well, well, I will assent. That means agree to. To this magnet cart horse and gear this very 15th day of June in the year of our Lord 1215, here at a runny mead, twixt Windsor and Staines, with outward grace and gravitas, but <laughs> I is simply biding my time until my army of cutthroat mercenaries are better deployed to utterly vanquish the disobedient baron and the King of France, and give it away with all I need is a few weeks, and assenting to the Magnet Cartos has gained me that day, he is so clever, well I is the King of England, <laughs> what can possibly go wrong now, well yes. Incredible. Pooh's lawyers tracked me down to an archaeological dig in the pouring rain in remote Orkney and threatened to sue me unless I completed the assignment and recorded the outro for his crappy magnet cart horse abomination. So, here goes. History records that King John's subterfuge and double dealing regarding Magna Carta did indeed gain him the time he needed to renew his war against his own barons and the King of France. His eventual defeat was never a foregone conclusion, and only his sudden death, from dysentery, just a year after he had feigned ascent to Magna Carta, prevented England descending into a new and bloody anarchy. Can I go back to my work now? Leave me alone bear. Yeah. 